Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for a second conversation. We'll be looking at the issue of deepening our democracy. As we had uh, Vice President Yemo Sibanjo and former President Ulusha Gunobasanjo on Monday uh, talked about strengthening our democracy in Africa. And this too made the call in Abiyokuta during the opening session of a two day democracy conference held at uh, the former president's presidential library. The conference, organized by the Coalition for Dialogue on Africa, was also attended by Ogun State Governor Dakpa Bioda, former President Goodluck Jonathan, and former Sierra Leone uh, President and former and a Professor Patatomi. A resolution reached that the conference are expected to pass on to the economic community of West African state and political leaders across West Africa. We'll have two analysts joining this conversation this morning, uh, looking at the issue of deepening our democracy in Nigeria. Mohamed Abdullahi is joining uh, as a political analyst. It's good to have you join us this morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Yes. All right. Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. All things being equal, we'll also have Dr. Mark Falan Edger join the conversation. All right. Thanks for joining us, Mohammed. Mohammed, yeah, can you, you for go? having me. All right. Oh, okay. Masha, go ahead. All right. So, um, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, our democracy, looking at our democracy as it is, um, what do you think we can do to deepen our democracy? Uh, good morning, uh, once again, Nigerians. Uh, it's important that uh, voter education. Uh, uh, we can't say Nigeria has a nascent democracy anymore. We've been practicing democracy for at least uh, 20 years now, if I'm not mistaken, since 1999, untruncated. So um, we have gone past the stage of uh, nascency. Uh, I think we're at a stage of where we need to keep developing our democracy. And um, it is important that uh, we continue to educate uh, Nigerians uh, concerning democracy, particularly the importance of, uh, of voting and, and the importance of uh, contributing uh, to the development of our, of our dear country. And that's why I said earlier that uh, uh, education, education, education is important. And I think um, the, new, um, uh, the, the new bill passed by the National Assembly, the Electoral Bill passed recently by the National Assembly has, uh, has a lot to do to contribute to the, our, our democracy at the moment, uh, ranging from all uh, facets of, uh, uh, of electioneering, uh, from being a voter to, being, to contesting for elections and so on and so forth. So what I would say that we need at the moment is uh, we need to continue to educate people, uh, to continue to reorientate our minds, reorientate our people from the villages to the cities, and from people, uh, people from all walks of life to understand the importance of democracy that is the best form of government as it were now for our country, and that we need people to come out in mass and vote, particularly for people of their choice, irrespective, uh, devoid of sentiment uh, like religion, tribe, and so on. All right, and thank you, uh, Mohammed, for your, for your opening um, remarks. Uh, let us bring in Dr. Mark Fallin Edja. Thanks for joining the conversation, Dr. Edja. Yeah, so Mohammed has talked about, um, he has emphasized the place of, uh, you know, voter education and the need for the electorate, and, you know, to be, you know, sensitized and educated, to be aware of what they really need to do, you know, come 2023. And he also said that um, the nation's democracy is not actually nascent anymore, that we've had uninterrupted um, democracy since uh, uh, 1999. Uh, but be that as it may right now, let's talk about the role of the political parties uh, in the country, you know, with uh, lots of uh, skirmishes here and there, lots of, uh, you know, um, issues and um, internal wranglings. Uh, would you really say that um, the political parties uh, have actually, you know, done so much, you know, in deepening this democracy that we talked about? Uh, because a school of thought believes that, uh, you know, most of the political parties in Nigeria uh, are seemingly, you know, bereft of um, ideologies uh, when it comes to, you know, direction as far uh, where or how to go. Okay. Uh, thank you for having me. 
uh, I think that the first problem is that our political parties are not ideologically based. Okay. They see themselves as a platform just to select candidates to offer candidates for election. Secondly, a few persons see themselves as owners of the political party. And so the members of the political parties are just there to make up numbers. If this is the view which they have, you see them operating the political parties as private entities for themselves and their own businesses. And so whether the people understand why they are there or not, it does not matter. They want at the end of the year, they do a convention to fulfill all righteousness and do the anointed selection of candidates based on one thing or the other. Now, the power of democracy resides in a well-educated electorate. And if that is done, people will demand for accountability, people will demand for transparency, people will demand for effective governance. And I believe the political parties, what they're doing is deliberately to disempower the people, ensure that they're just following them without understanding what they're doing, and that's why they have weaponized hunger. Now, a hungry man doesn't seem to focus on any other thing other than ensuring that he feels comfortable. If the political parties are actually doing voter education in the proper sense of it, we we'll see a reduction in wasted votes because even ordinary things like some printing, the party members themselves should know. But we are not having it. And during it, political campaign period like this, we expect that voter education should cut across everybody. But that is not happening. But I am confident that with emerging issues, amendments to the electoral law, and people growing up, the people are beginning to take, you know, their faith in their hands. Civil society organizations are doing voter education. Political parties should join force. With the current cases where issues of uh, decamping and cross carpeting seems to be checked by the ongoing judgment. We believe that if the Supreme Court finally makes a pronouncement, the political parties owe themselves no other thing other than developing ideology. And if they develop their ideologies, they will ensure that their voter base is properly educated. And if that is all, we see, you know, a plus to our growing democracy. All right, Dr. Mark Falanedra, let's, let's still stay, you know, um, with the issue of the Constitution at this point. Uh, some people have said that, you know, the Constitution is very fundamental in our democratic process. So the, the question from me to you now is, do you think that the Nigerian Constitution promotes the fundamental ethos and principle of democracy? Uh, I, will, I will want to say, based on what we have, and the emerging development, there will be need to review the constitution in its true sense of review, not selective review. So that we begin to look at the cries of the people, the emerging issues. Let me give you one typical example. Because we have not been able to manage our diversity from a positive direction, you see the issue of zoning becoming a burning issue, a recurring issue during every election. But if we have it clearly enshrined in the Constitution in such a manner that it promotes inclusivity and ensuring that every geopolitical divide, recognizing the heterogeneous nature of Nigeria as a sense of belonging with regards to serving at leadership position, it will become an issue that the Constitution is sensitive. There are different cries that people have made at different areas, which tends to make some people more Nigerian than the other. The laws are made and its application are selective. Let's have a Constitution that guarantees nationhood, guarantees the rights of everybody in its true sense, regardless of where you come from. So, based on that analysis, you discover that the present constitution we have needs to be reviewed carefully. I don't think we are bereaved of information. 
The 2014 constitutional review was a deliberate process to harvest information from different schools of thought. And that document is still there. We need to go back and look at it. When people speak, when the country hosts a meeting, resources are spent. It should not be swept under the carpet. So I think that there are several documents that if we put them together, we will have a people-sensitive and a people-friendly constitution. All right, thank you, Dr. Um, Aja. Back to you now, Mohammed um, um, Abdullah. You know, we are approaching 2023, and most times uh, uh, political parties and, uh, you know, their candidates, you know, they would want to sell themselves uh, very wonderful in the, in the sight of um, the people so as to convince them to, you know, give them, you know, their mandate and, uh, you know, so they can control the machinery of government. But when we talk about democracy in Nigeria, lots of things come to mind. That's the sovereignty of the people. Talk about uh, government based on the consent of the people, you know, and a lot of uh, issues also. Guarantee of basic human rights, you know. 2023 is uh, around the corner, you know. So what should we be telling the elect electorate now as uh, we prepare to go to polls? You know, there have been infractions when it comes to equality before the law and, of course, uh, government, uh, you know, following um, due process and actually going by what uh, the process of the law or, you know, or the laws of the country have said. So what should we be saying to the electorate right now as we, as they, you know, are faced with, uh, you know, barrages of candidates who uh, want to control the machinery of government? Yeah, before I answer your question, thank you for the question. Um, let me quickly disagree with my learned uh, doctor uh, who talked about uh, Nigeria having to enshrine or to review our constitution to make sure that uh, there is proper zoning of power. I would beg to disagree that um, the democracy we practice today uh, from the developed clients, like even the US and even the UK, um, there's nothing like zoning. Competency is the key word. You know, there's nothing like the fact that uh, South Kensington has produced the president, then uh, the prime minister, sorry, then uh, Birmingham must produce the next prime minister. No, no, no. I think what we should be championing is the fact that who is com competent, who is capable of delivering the dividend of democracy, who is capable of taking this country to the very next level that we all dream about. But having said, having said that, um, let me also mention, coming back to your question, that um, what we should be telling the electorate at the moment is the fact that we should be guaranteeing the electorate that our vote count. That is first and foremost. Foremost, It is very, very important that when we tell people to go out and vote, we can secure their lives. We can ensure that whom and which party they are voting for is, is going to count at the end of the election. And we can also ensure that uh, there will be no any sort of manipulation of the will of the people. This is very, very, very important. And that is why I, for one, am clamoring for, you know, electronic voting, because I don't understand why at this stage in Nigeria, after 62 years of independence, or almost 62 years of independence, even when we are, we are conducting local government elections, we have to register people dead. People have to die. For why? For what reason? So, but when we go, when, when we are able to adopt electoral, um, sorry, electronic voting, this will come to a so a certain extent, if not minimize or reduce to, uh, to, 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 to zero the, the, uh, the, the, the number of casualties that we record on election days. It's so saddening that we, we are conducting election at this age in Nigeria, at this jet age, and we find people, kill people here and there, you know, in the name of election. So like I mentioned earlier, first and foremost, we must guarantee that our votes count. We must guarantee that there is security of lives of voters. It is very important. And we must also guarantee that we can also hold our politicians to their promises. You know, let me, let me, let me give you an example. Um, before this government came into power, there were a whole lot of um, campaigns, promises here and there. But after being voted into power, the same government is telling us they didn't promise us that so, so, so will be so. I don't want to mention names. But because there is no blueprint to say, okay, this is your campaign promises, and this is what the electorate will hold you accountable for. So it is very, very important that we have all these processes in place, like I mentioned, 
people must be, uh, safety of the people of the voters must be guaranteed. And then voters, uh, the will of the voters must, must not be subverted. Mm. Well, okay, so we'll bring in Dr. Mark Fallon in no time, but I'm sure that you want to agree with me that uh, election is just one step in a democratic process. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you have different issues that would, you know, um, boost and you talk about enhancing or deepening or fixing our democracy as it were. So uh, just the election is just one of it. There are too many other issues. Uh, Dr. Mark Fallon, on this particular one, some persons have said that the issue of the financial incentive should be reduced. Because if you look at the cost of governance, it takes a toll. And some people are saying that this has constantly encouraged everyone to, uh, you know, want to um, acquire or just uh, vie for the position, political office in Nigeria because of, you know, this incentive. It needs to be reduced. If you begin to look at the salaries and the incentive of the senators, juxtaposing that, uh, you know, with what... Uh, the civil servants actually end, you know, you want to talk about the medical doctors, you want to talk about other professionals in the society. Uh, it's not enough. And with all of this um, disparity, uh, some persons have said that there should be a reduction in this incentive, uh, that leadership should be more about, you know, the quality, those who can be lead, uh, those who can actually lead, uh, th this should actually be the focal point. I'd like to share your thoughts. Are you in support of this school of thought? All right. Uh, quickly, just before I answer that, um, let me just uh, react to what my friend has said with regards to my issue of talking about zoning. He said that our democracy is fashioned after the United States of America. That I agree. But the United States of America has strong institutions. It recognizes diversity and heterogeneous nature. The Nigerian democracy is fashioned after the United States of America. But those operating it have very selected what makes them more powerful than the people. And so the review must not be what we think, it must be what the people think. Let's stop thinking for Nigerians. Let's think with Nigerians. Okay, so back to the issue of uh, what you said about the uh, cost of service and allowances paid to them. I'm one person who has emphatically said that no member of the National Assembly to earn more than a federal permanent secretary for crying out loud. What is it that they are doing that the federal permanent secretary is not doing? Because if you're going to the National Assembly, let's actually to a community meeting. We've had a meeting and somebody needs to represent us. And the person is saying, I offer myself to represent you. That you offer yourself to represent us doesn't mean you mean us. So the amount of money being paid to them, the conditions of service, the allowances, is a collective assault to our sensibilities and our integrity. For God's sake, people are struggling with a few hundreds of naira and they are earning in millions. They don't even keep in touch with their constituencies. Now, during the election period, you find them coming in. That's when they are buying bags of salt, buying rice, buying keke, buying uh, motorcycles and invoke now many buses. You come to the people only four years. When it is election period, you come in, you buy more tricycles to people. There are more tricycles than passengers. You're not supporting the economic system. Check the amount of money that they are earning. Check the number of people who are unemployed. And I'm saying that that cost is uneconomical, is repugnant to human sense of justice compared to the way Nigerians are currently living. Now, if you reduce that and make somebody end like a federal permanent secretary, he's entitled just to his car and any other, maybe other domestic car. You see that those who go to the National Assembly to serve, the State Assembly to serve, are actually going because they want to serve, not because they want to make money. So a lot of people who are going into politics today are going because they want to milk you know, the system, they see it as the only way they want to make money. Politics is not a profession here. It should be like a vocation. So you have somebody who has made it, somebody who is willing to give back. So I'm in total support of, you know, reduction of allowances, making them people sensitive. If you do that, you will have quality of people who are going to be there. So 
Firstly, why people are coupling to go in is an issue of, you know, finding themselves that they want to make okay. money. Dr. Marfalan, quickly, let's brush this issue, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that, um, you know, uh, Abdullahi would also might also come in uh, with time. It's the issue of violence in our elections. And this has actually happened, you know, prior to this time. Our elections has been characterized by thugs and, uh, um, you know, activity of violent people. And yeah. way back in history, some have backdated that to the 1959. And you want to look at the uh, 1963 election. Uh, you want to just look at our elections, 2011. That's usually issue of violence. How do we solve all of this? Now, if you, the issue of violence in the election is because people are interested in acquisition of power, not to serve the people, but to put the people in perpetual subjugation. And with the position of uh, my friend Abdullahi. Where we, are, we need to ensure that electronic voting is fully in, in operation, where the people's vote will count. So if you have a system that promotes electro, electronic voting, and the process of voting is credible, people's vote counts, and you can sit somewhere and vote without, you know, the, pulling people together, hungry is going to be reduced, violence will be reduced, now, the political system has consciously weaponized hunger. And they increased this during the election period, during the election year, making the people much more vulnerable. They pull cash out of the system, and so the people become weak. A number of foot soldiers are now employed, and violence is promoted. The violence we are facing today as regards of insecurity, you can't separate it from Hungry, which has been, you know, the underlying factor in our elections build-up. And so it doesn't call for, election doesn't call for violence. We don't need to share people's blood to get into a position of authority. All right, uh, Mohammed um, Abdullah, I'm, so you, I'm sure you also want to chip in concerning um, electoral um, violence and, of course, um, other things we need to do to deepen our democracy vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, due process of law and guarantee of basic human rights. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the first and foremost uh, thing we need to put in place, like the uh, doctor has continued uh, to, to mention, is to reduce the incentive to political office. It's, it's, it's very funny that, uh, you know, uh, Politics here is a kind of profession. And I agree totally with the doctor who says uh, it should be more like a vocation, something like a pastime. You don't tell me that somebody goes to the National Assembly, sits three times weekly. In fact, those three times that they are sitting, is not composite. Some of them go out of the country for two, three months without even sitting once in a month. But they earn jumbo pay in millions. You know, they corner all the contract and so on and so forth. So the incentive is, is way, way above board. We need to reduce the incentive to political office. There is no way a, a, a professor in Nigerian university who has earned his or her strides for at least 20 to 25 years, you know, teaching and developing capacity will be earning less than 1,000 US, US dollars. That is about 455 to 500,000 Nigerian naira. And a politician who probably does not have more than a school sat will be earning in millions, in tens, in, in tens of millions. You that that is not justice at all. You know, we need to reduce the incentive to a certain, certain to a uh, you know to a level way, way beyond what it is now. That is one. Then secondly, like I mentioned in my earlier statement, electronic voting. You reduce a whole lot of human contact with the system. In fact, as I'm speaking with you, I am in my room, I am voting. You are in your room, you are voting. Probably you are in your toilet, I'm sorry, you are voting. So nobody sees you. Nobody understands what you are seeing, what you are doing. You just punch one, two, three button, and you have voted. And it is collected electronically, so nobody knows. So that reduces the, you know, the, 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 the chances of violence, the chances of thuggery, the chances of ballot snatching, the chances of people not being able to see well while collecting things manually, you know, at this age. So uh, I think these two things, if well implemented, and then lastly, I will mention accountability is very important. The way our country and our system is designed, 
we don't hold our leaders accountable. In fact, I was reading a story recently which was very despicable. Somebody, a high, a top-ranking official, probably who stole about seven something million, and the court is asking that same in, in, individual to return less than probably four or five million, and that person is 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 is, is set free. How do you how do you run a country like that? You know, are you not encouraging other people to go and steal? If I can steal hundred million and go back and give the government maybe five million, then I, I I can do I can make do with the ninety five million. That is not how to run a country. So we need you know, like I mentioned, reduce the incentive, ensure electronic voting in our in in our future uh, electionary system, and then accountability and justice. Okay, but uh, just quickly, we're coasting it down now, Dr. Mark Fallon. Uh, the, the, we're talking about, you know, the election as we're getting close to 2023. It feels like every election year, usually you have to have heightened security concerns. Some persons are already wondering, could this be part of the scheme? And let's also not forget, in 2019, you had uh, the Minister for Culture and Information, Lai Mohammed, accusing the opposition party of um, trying to cost me him or responsible for all of the security concerns. You also remember uh, just uh, not recently, like last year, um, Professor Jaga talking about the fact that uh, with the insecurity issue in the country, if care is not taken, we probably might not have the 2023 elections. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Why is this happening? Every election time, uh, security concerns are usually on the high. Now, I hold the politician completely accountable for the increasing insecurity during election period. Election-related insecurity, the politicians should be answerable to Nigeria. How? Now, security is in the hands of the people. When the people are comfortable in the process and believe in the process, they'll take security in their own hands. The politicians don't go in to cause the problem. They recruit people. They get their followers. A tout or a lowly placed person will be ready to disrupt an electoral process just because he is offered to be a ticket boy in a motor park somewhere where he collects tickets and pays a certain amount of money to either the local government or state government. So if he makes like 10 naira and he's paying 2 naira, the boy now will disrupt the electoral process in favor of the person who is going to give him ticket to do man that fact, regardless of whether the person is qualified or not. And so when you find this kind of thing, because of the poverty stricken nature of the people, the people, politicians have taken advantage of it. And so we need to hold them accountable. I give you a practical example that the people can take decisions and the election can be uh, uh, crisis free. The Anambra election that just finished, I net came up and the whole country, given the insecurity in the southeast, everybody we were concerned and worried about the election. But when the people got up, the community got up, the leadership of that area got up and spoke, everybody took security into their own hands. It's on record that they went out, the election was done and it was peaceful. So why the politicians will not want crisis to reduce? I want the electorate. I want the community leaders to take ownership of security. Call the people and discuss with them that you don't need to be used. The man who is perpetrating violence to bring his own children, he should be at the forefront. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Eja. That's as much as we can take. Uh, we must say a very okay. big thank you for all of um, your input uh, this um, morning. We've been looking at um, deepening the nation's democracy, and we were joined by Dr. McFarlane Eja, political analyst, all the way from Cross River State. And of course, Mohammed Abulai, public affairs analyst, joined us here from Lagos. Thank you so much, gentlemen. All right, thank you. All right, it's still The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We'll take a quick break uh, where we'll come back. We'll try and understand uh, what exactly happened with the uh, uh, Boja Kaduna uh, train uh, you know, incident yesterday. And of course, I'll uh, we'll be looking at more insight and of course, uh, profile uh, more solutions in a moment to join us again.